priority in India when you have hunger, when you have other much bigger issues. But I think overall India is on a good trajectory when it comes to sports, opening out and creating a mentality where youngsters want to play sports is, is the key. I've always done some sporting activity or the other. So when I was small, I used to do um, taekwondo, karate, swimming. Recently, I, I do Aikido. Do you know, do you know, you've heard of Aikido? It's a Japanese martial art, so I'm a black belt in that. And then I run every day. It's non-violent though. It's not a, it's not a violent martial art. Uh, it's a non-violent martial art. And it's more of a, of a philosophy. It's very interesting from a business perspective as well. Because it teaches you how to use your opponent's strengths. And, and do so non-violently. Uh, in college, I used to box. Uh, and play football. So that's, that's overall what I used to do. Good morning, sir. This side, this side. Hi. Good morning, sir. Uh, so you mentioned about China and India being the growing giants. So China has already proved themselves. Now, after you the power, so what would be the industry that you would focus on? I think there are opportunities. Healthcare is a huge opportunity for India. And I don't mean healthcare just as in building hospitals. I mean thinking about healthcare strategically from a national and global perspective. Um, how you think about healthcare data, how you think about providing cheap medicines, and thinking about how India relates to the global economy with regards to healthcare. We're sitting on the biggest genetic resources on the planet. Much like Saudi Arabia has oil, we have the most complex DNA structures on the planet. And that is what cure and medical health is going to be about 10, 15 years from today. So we need to make those type of large scale plans. Much like what Mr. Sam Petroda did in telecoms, we need to think strategically about what we can do in healthcare. Air transport is another one. Uh, radically transforming agriculture. Currently, our agricultural system is not connected to the global economy. And it's very weakly connected to the Indian economy. Uh, huge amount of wastage in food. Huge amount of wastage of vegetables and fruits. So building a cold chain, building a agricultural corridor connecting the farm to the plate, making it possible for Indian farmers to send their uh, products to people in Dubai. So that would be, the agriculture one is not an option, it's a necessity. So that's, that's the second thing. Um, telecoms, IT, software, those are already places where we are pretty successful. And then moving from a focus on 10, 15 big companies to empowering thousands and thousands of small and medium entrepreneurs. So reshaping the banking system so that small and medium companies can get financial resources and actually scale up and become large companies. If you look at India's record, India's record at moving companies from small and medium size to large size is terrible. Almost no small and medium companies transition into large companies. Whereas if you look at the Chinese, most of their billion dollar companies arose out of small and medium sized companies. So that's something that we have to focus on. And then empowering guys like you. What do you want to do? Uh, uh, I'm currently doing my majors in marketing. So. Like you mentioned about the air transport, we have a success story here in Emirates. So, yeah. like building something like Emirates in It's a brilliant example. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what the, what the UAE countries like Turkey have done with their air transport systems, fantastic. And we have to, we have to do similar stuff back home. Much more complex, uh, the rules, regulations in India with regards to air transport, much more complex. 
um, I'll tell you a story. I'm actually a pilot. And at one point, I started to look at the questions uh, and the, the syllabus of the pilot uh, exam in India. And in the book, in the exam, I mean, one of the, one of the questions was, how do you drop postage from an aeroplane? This was, you know, 15 years ago. The thing is that you stop dropping postage from aeroplanes 40 years before that. But it's still an exam on the Indian, it's still a question on the Indian exam. It's ridiculous, right? So, so some of those things are, are, are sort of quite hard to change. They're bureaucracies, they're, they're sort of not fast moving. So that, that's where one has to focus. Big, big issue with air transport in India is number of airports um, and the connectivity between different cities uh, as far as airports are concerned. Can I intervene? We have very little time. Maybe we have time for one brief question and one brief answer. Hello. Hi, good Hello. morning, sir. Good morning. Yes. My name is Amala, and I'm, com I'm uh, elected vice president of Sunrise English Private School, Abu Dhabi. Uh, I'm thankful for this opportunity. Um, the Indian National Congress has been uh, successful over 188 years, starting from the period of uh, Dr. Annie Besant to uh, transgenders being included in the central politics. Uh, my question is that women in the rural areas, uh, the heart of India, has not been given much opportunities or attention compared to the women that we have on the central politics. So what will be your uh, programs to actually uh, you know, make the rural women uh, the attention of central politics? And I would also like to know, uh, most of the kids in India have underwent ch child abuse and child uh, mortality. And how would you change in case if you become the Prime Minister of India? Okay, by the way, there's the, the, the first statement you made is actually wrong. Because if you look at our political system, and if you look at our political system, Maximum women's representation in our political system is actually at the village level. So we have reservation for women in Panchayati Raj, meaning all the local elections in villages and small um, town areas, all of them have reservations for women. And, they are, and women are playing a very, very aggressive and active role in the local political scenario. That has not actually happened at the national scenario. And we are currently fighting to put reservations for women in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. And so that, that is work in progress. I think that will be a big step when we give reservation to women in the Houses of Parliament. But in the rural areas, actually, they have moved ahead of uh, the Parliament. There's been very powerful programs particularly in the southern states, microfinance programs and self-help group, group programs, which have connected women to the banking system. And it's actually been revolutionary in Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka. The real problem is in North India, where the attitude towards women and the sort of approach towards women is just wrong. And it's extremely discriminatory and offensive. And I think that's where we have to change people's minds. But in South India, women's uh, incorporation into the political system, incorporation into the economy has gone done pretty well, comparatively. So it's a mixed bag. I think, I think Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, this belt is where we really have to push women's empowerment uh, and women's role in, in politics. It's something that we are doing, but it's difficult. 
Now you, you're vice president. So when are you joining us? <laughs> uh, good one. I really Hello. like politics, and my father is a really good uh, politician too. Um, as far as uh, you know, coming into the limelight, I've been thought of IFS uh, in case if I pass the civil service with nice marks. But politics is something which I have to you know really look on to, and uh, you know I yeah I need a lot of support and courage to be if you if you're interested come and talk to some of us and we'll we'll at least explain to you what it looks like and 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 the <laughs> type of so experiences much, that you will and face and you might change your mind you might change your mind good morning sir thank you because you I have to have a thick we skin we have no time well, unfortunately question. we do not have time La for last more question sir, uh, okay maybe uh, one more sam is always sir, in a hurry medical one question sir. sir a medical in question sir. sorry yeah. sir taking a bit of your time but good morning sir i'm yogi studying at the gulf medical university right now sir i would like to give you a brief about my story in 2015 when i started studying in uae i was in uae i was born and brought up in uae throughout my life in 2015 i studied i was finishing my high school that was my last year i went back to my state in gujarat I went to the medical colleges over there and I asked them, will NRI students be able to enter your medical schools? They told, yes, definitely, sir. You don't have to give any exams and you can come directly to us. We'll give you, uh, if you uh, match our criteria. I went in 2016. One month before, government implemented NEET, which was very unethical and it was very unfair for the NRI students. I'm not asking you for giving us more, but at least what we need Indian students get into a normal quota without, just they get the required percentage and they get into an open quota, but NRI students have no rights. I'm not asking you for more, but at least what is needed for us. Okay. I'm not asking you for my career. I'm into Gulf Medical University. It's a reputed university. I have no problem. But at least for the future career coming up, I guess, for the whole NRI students present to our guys, right? NRI students, okay. at least we need what we need, sir. No, I agree. I, I agree with you in principle that it should be fair. So you, should, um, you shouldn't treat NRIs and people back home differently. So I agree with you in principle. I don't run the government of Gujarat, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, can we... Good. I think this is a good place to close. If you are in media, then there is a student's interaction here. I will talk to you later. Good morning, sir. Okay, can we... Can we, Thick excuse it. me, thank you. Thank you. Bilkul. Thick. Thank you. I'm sorry, but we got to close here because we have so another schedule. Can I just, can I just okay. uh, say two words? Okay, I want to say two words. Okay, you say two words. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead first, I'll, I'll close. Okay, I just want to emphasize two points from his comments. One was on brain drain. What Rahul has been saying is that it is not brain drain, but it is brain gain and brain chain. That's the idea we have in the party. We want to chain all our brains from wherever they are. Could be Amartya Sen in England, could be Raghu Rajan in US, could be somebody here. We are connected with a lot of these people and we want that bond to be stronger. Second point on education. The basic challenge in education is in three areas. Expansion, where we need more colleges, more schools, more opportunities. Excellence, the quality of our education is pretty bad, leaving aside top 5%, and equity. We have to make sure that the poorest of the poor can indeed get best education possible. 
And that's what he talked about. I wish we had two more hours to interact with you. There are lots and lots of interesting ideas he has on education that he and I have talked for the last five years on use of technology, on rechanging the entire structure. Why does it take four years to get a degree? Who decided that? Why should we follow that in 21st century? Why do you really need a teacher? Is teacher trained to be a mentor? All I need today is motivation, time, and content to learn. I don't need teacher. How do I do that? How do I structure education with new technology? And he has some very interesting ideas on these things. But this is not enough time. So I want to thank Mr. Rahul Gandhi. I'm sure he's going to have a few more minutes to talk. Unfortunately, we have another appointment and we can't be late. I want to thank you all. I want to thank Institute of Management Technology for hosting us. Unfortunately, we are running out of time everywhere. You know, you'll be surprised that I have requests from about 100 people on my mobile phone to see him for half an hour each in one day. The love and affection we have received here is phenomenal. Thank you all. Really appreciate. Here is the last word so, from Rahul. So, a couple of things I want to leave you with. Number one, you are in our eyes. You have a role in India. And it's going to be a role that is going to increase. It's not going to decrease. You have knowledge, you have understanding. And this is very valuable for our country. India is facing a couple of serious problems. Number one is unemployment. We have the highest rate of unemployment we've had in over a decade. We are simply not being able to produce the jobs that we are required to produce. And it is very important that India accepts that it is facing a job crisis. Mentally accepts that, yes, we have a problem. Second, India has an agricultural crisis. And these two have to be resolved. There is no way out other than resolving these. And these two crises are going to require your help. They're going to require your service. The final thing I want to tell you is that the world is changing. It is transforming. We're moving from a world where the United States was dominant to a world where China is rising. And India has to be very clear with its positioning, its path through the next couple of decades. India cannot get into a confrontation with China. India cannot get into a confrontation with any country. But India also has to maintain its position and maintain its space. And that really is the biggest foreign policy challenge for us. You're going to see a nation century. There's no question of it. So you're going to see a reduction of importance of Europe. 